Today, we're doing part four of the Honda CBR buggy. Now, last video was all about figuring out how to add front brakes to this thing. I built a couple of these, and then uh, we also started building the front spindles. This video is going to be about finishing the front spindles, figuring out how to add the CV, the, uh, the, not the CV, the, the hind joints to right here and here. This attaches to right here, then the caliper will attach to that, and this will you know, turn, allowing the tire to pivot and turn and do all that kind of stuff the front tire needs to do. Then we can focus on the front suspension and then we can hopefully, hopefully the tubing better will get here soon. So therefore we can continue with building the frame. My tubing bender that I've been waiting for, for I want to say like three weeks now, finally showed up last night. I opened the boxes and pulled out the two dies that I bought. I bought two of them. One, a one inch die for the one inch tubing that I bought for all the cross members and all that kind of stuff to strengthen the frame. And the main die that I needed, which is inch and a quarter, the main size tubing that I'm using for the most of the whole frame. What got here, what arrived last night, is not an inch and a quarter die. It's something else. So I, when I found that out that it's, this is the wrong die, I went back on eBay and looked at the listing, the page where I bought the die, and it says on the main page, on the top, inch and a quarter OD. But then if you go down, scroll down and look at uh, specifics or the specific, whatever it is, you click on that, and then that says inch and a quarter NPS, which I believe means national pipe standard, whatever that means. Um, and then in parentheses, it says next to it 1.66 OD. So I measured it, and sure enough, it's 1.66 OD. So unfortunately, I bought the wrong die. Um, 
When I found that out last night, I bought the right one, which I made sure, I looked and made sure it's the right diet said in the specifics, 1.25 OD. So I bought the right one hopefully this time. I'm hoping it's going to get here soon, hopefully within a week or two. But um, it's just more time that we have to wait for the dye that, uh, that I need kind of right now. So I'm not really sure what to do right now. I just finished working on the spindles. I got them welded up. I guess let's start focusing on the front suspension. Um, there's really nothing else we can do right now. But uh, yeah, it's a bit unfortunate. A little bit of a setback, but let's just keep working, I guess. Uh, there's really nothing else we can do.
Okay, so we finally built the front suspension. This is what I came up with. I'm kind of looking at pictures of other sand rails, other dune buggies, and kind of just copying what they have built uh, with a slight difference. Um, most sand rails and dune buggies, they put their hind joints that connect to the spindle. They put them vertically, so therefore, you know, they have as much up and down travel as possible, but it does limit with uh, how much the tire can turn because this thing's kind of massive. It's going to be more of an off-road vehicle. It's got off-road tires. It's going to be more of an off-road vehicle. I need these tires to turn as much as possible, so therefore, I put the hind joints horizontally. It does mean that I'm limited with how much the suspension can travel up and down, but it does mean the tires can turn a ridiculous amount. That much this way and that much this way. I could do it more, but it doesn't need it. Once I hook up all the steering components, I think it's the max is going to be around there, which is perfect because, yet again, this thing's going to be an off-road, it's going to be more of an off-road vehicle. It's got off-road tires and sand rails. They don't really need to turn that much. They're out in the open. It's, they're not going around trees and going around corners and all that kind of stuff that you find off-road. Now, um, I know some of you are concerned that the engine I'm using is not going to have enough power to move this massive frame. In case you guys are wondering how big this thing is, it's 77 inches wide by 10 and a half feet long. I know that most dune buggies and sand rails of this size that people build, most people use like a V8 engine that has like two or three times more horsepower than the engine I have, or they use like an R1 or a CBR1000 fuel injector that has two or three times more horsepower than I have. I think my engine has around 100 horsepower. I think it's going to be like 80, maybe 90, hopefully 90 horsepower. It's the most horsepower I've ever played around with, but still I think not enough to move this frame really well. So my plan around that is um, be able to use the forward and reverse gear, gearbox. By the way, thank you guys so much for everybody who has been helping me try to find a different type of forward reverse gearboxes. Thank you to everyone who's been uh, post or, uh, commenting links, commenting where other places I can buy this thing. I'm still looking into uh, one that I can find that will work for my project, but thank you guys so much for helping me with that. My plan is to be able to use the forward reverse gearbox as a jack shaft to be able to have just more gear reduction. Go from a, four, a, a I think it's a 17 tooth sprocket on the engine, I can always make that smaller to a 47 tooth sprocket on the jack shaft, to a 17 tooth sprocket on the out output of the jack shaft, to a 60 tooth sprocket. That's definitely going to make this thing on the slower side, but because it's an off-road vehicle, I just I kind of have to do that so I don't burn the clutch up so it has enough torque to move this thing. It's going to be on the slower side, but because it's a racing engine, it'll still be pretty fast for an off-road vehicle. I definitely don't want this thing to go 80 or 90 miles an hour, however fast this thing would go with the gearing it has right now. So I definitely have to gear this thing lower. Worst case, I slap a bigger engine on it. I'd rather not do that. I'd rather keep this thing a Honda CBR 600 project. Next part is going to be the rear suspension. I think that's part five, I believe. But um, anyway, I gotta end this video here. I'll be posting links in the description below to where you guys can find all the parts I've been using for this project that I've been buying online. Also, I will be at the uh, Texas Paint Swap Meet on April 25th, 26th, and 27th. More information on the screen right here. But uh, yeah, if you guys are over there, if you guys are at in Texas, if you guys plan on going over there, definitely stop by and say hello. But uh, yeah, I gotta end this video here. Thank you all for watching. I'll see ya in the next one.